Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of our video series for our custom speaker boxes for our 2020 Mustang. So just as a recap for our first video we went ahead and made a wooden base and then we taped off the trunk just so we can create a fiberglass mold and this is a fairly easy step all you have to do is put a nice clean layer of fiberglass down and then we took it out and added a second layer and this is what it looks like. So it does look pretty rough but don't worry we're going to move forward and it's going to start cleaning up very nicely. And after the fiberglass is cured we went ahead and threw it back in the trunk just so we can mark the cutting area. Now I did this with a marker and by hand, so I did it kind of along the curves. However, if you want a little bit more precision, you can go ahead and use painter's tape and go ahead and tape along the edges of where you want to cut, just so it's a little bit more cleaner for you. So now that we have the edges marked, we can go ahead and cut along the line using our oscillating tool. Just make sure you have a respirator and safety glasses on. So there's the passenger side, looks pretty good. And there goes the driver's side. Doesn't look too shabby with clean edges. So now that we have the edges cut, now this is a good opportunity to remove all that remaining or excess tape that's on the back of the mold that may be still stuck on there. Now you can do it with an eraser wheel, which I'm doing right here. I'm trying to do just one layer, which doesn't come out too bad, but it's a little bit time consuming, but it does work. The other way to do it is use soapy water. And you go ahead and saturate the tape. Pretty much you just want to soak it down. Because the more you soak it, the more the adhesive is going to give away. So I just went ahead and drenched it, and then start pulling it away little by little. And... Yeah, you can see where chunks of it starting to come loose. So that's exactly what we want. So that's probably the best method is just use soapy water. So after taking several minutes and a lot of soapy water, we went ahead and ripped off all the tape. And this is what we're looking at. So far, it's not looking too shabby. I love the shape it's taking. It's actually looking pretty good. And I'll see about showing you the front. So seeing how that looks, it doesn't look too shabby at all. I do like the depth on the passenger side. It gives you a lot of room for a nice deep speaker. And taking a look at the driver's side, this is the one that's slightly concerning but I do believe we can make it fit and make it work based on my measurements. So now we can create our speaker rings. So I'm gonna use an MDF board, and then I'm gonna grab our ruler, and I'm gonna mark out certain areas. Of course, I'm gonna mark out zero. Then I'm gonna mark out the radius of what the holes need to be. So four and a half, five and three eighths, and five and three quarters. Those are the areas we're gonna be drilling holes into. So I have a nice little one eighth drill bit, and we're gonna start at the zero, four and a half, and five and three quarters, and five and three eighths. And this came out looking pretty good. I think this is going to work really well in making our circles on our MDF board. And this is how we're going to use this. We're going to hold down the ruler at the zero, press down a screw or nail. And that way we can rotate it down and draw out our circle. And we'll go ahead and do the outer edge. We'll go ahead and use our carpenter's pencil. And this is going to be 11 half inches on our outside diameter. And that looks pretty good. And now let's do our inside diameter. And let's go ahead and do a 9 inch one. So this is going to be a 9 inch diameter on the inside. And there we go. That looks really good, really clean. And we'll move our nail. And then just mark off the area we want to cut away. And I'm going to bring the camera in just so you can get a better view. So far it's not too shabby. It's coming out pretty good. So now I'm going to show you two methods we can cut away this ring. First one is going to use a router. Cut a hole in the center. And that way the router pivots around and cuts along the edges of the ring. So I'm going to show you that one first. So now I'll go ahead and take a drill bit, go ahead and drill in the center, and that's pretty much marked when we used that screw earlier or that nail. So it made it indent in the wood already, so that made it easy on us. And then I'll measure out the center to the cutting edge just so we have a perfect radius. Tighten it down, and always recheck it after you tighten it. Measure twice. All right, looks pretty good. And now I'm going to use a half-inch drill bit just at the very edge so we can start putting the routing bit in there. And then go ahead and set it up, place your bolt right in your hole. And then we'll go ahead and turn on our router and just start working our way around. And there's nothing much to this, it just takes a little time. And there goes one side right there. And this first ring came out looking really good. The outer edge is nice and smooth. And now I'm going to go ahead and continue on marking the other rings. Now two of them are going to have an inside diameter that's slightly bigger than the other two, just because the speaker is going to be recessed. So now the second method I'm going to show you for cutting the ring is using a jigsaw, probably the most common method. And we'll start with using a half inch drill bit just so I can get the cutting bit in there. 
And then once it's in there, just go ahead and cut around it and take your time. That way your circle's nice and clean. And I'm almost at the very end. Just got to make a full circle. And there we go. And that didn't come out looking too bad at all. Actually looks pretty good. So now that we have all four rings cut out, now just we need to attach them together so we can make two sets. We have an outer ring and an inner ring. And we're going to attach these together again to recess the speakers within the boxes. So all we have to do is take some wood glue. And we're going to apply a nice little generous amount on the outside. And please keep in mind, I am not a professional carpenter. I just know enough information to be dangerous. And now we'll take our outer ring and go ahead and press it right on our inner ring. And we're going to hold these firmly together using C-clamps. So I'll try to get one right there. And make sure it's good and tight. And then we'll put one on the other side as well. Make sure that one's tight as well. And then we'll take a paper towel and just clean away all that excess glue just so it's nice and clean. The next day. And after letting these sit overnight, these came out looking really good, nice and clean. The outer edges are a little rough, but don't worry, we'll dress that. But so far, these look pretty good. Let's go and do a test fit. So here's the speaker we're going to use, and we're going to go ahead and see how it slides on these rings. And, oh yeah, that's a perfect fit. That looks really good. So I think that's going to work out really well. I think it's going to be able to handle the weight. And overall, I love how that looks. I think this is going to turn out really nicely. I'm just really stoked to see how this is looking. This is actually really, really promising. So let's keep going. Next, let's go ahead and grab our sander right here. Nice little handheld one and some 80 grit sandpaper. And the whole idea is I want to go ahead and sand off these edges, get them nice and smooth, just pretty much clean up these rings as much as possible. Now let's take a look. Oh yeah, this looks really smooth. I like how this is coming out. So little things like this really make me happy just to see that this project is moving forward. So far, I'm loving what I'm seeing. So now that the rings are clean, let's go ahead and bring the speaker back in. Go ahead and press it right back into the ring. Beautiful. Man, this looks really good. I can't get over how good this looks. So next, we're going to take these furniture inserts and go ahead and put them in the ring. And we're going to be using also these nice, beautiful black bolts. It's going to match perfectly with the speaker. Look how that looks. That looks really good. And to install these inserts, it's really easy. I want to go ahead and mark the very top of the ring. And this is just for a reference point. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my pencil and just mark out every hole. It's really easy. Just give it a nice little turn. And we're going to do this for all eight holes. So now let's go ahead and remove our speaker from the ring. Go ahead and set that aside. And taking a look, look at that. Eight beautiful markings. And then I'll place the ring on two pieces of wood. Grab my drill, my 3H drill bit. And all you have to do is drill through all eight holes. And I'm going to try to line it up as best as possible. Make sure it's nice and clean and straight. And there's one hole right there. Do a little test fit. And yep, looks pretty good. And now we'll go and grab our insert, grab a little bit of wood glue. Now this is going to be really good because it's going to act as a lubricant as we're screwing this into the wood, but also hold it in place or act as adhesive once it dries. And I'll go ahead and tighten this down with the Allen key it came with, make sure it's nice and snug, and then we'll check to make sure it's flush. Yep, that looks pretty good. And we'll do the same thing on the remaining seven inserts. And so far these are going pretty good, no cracks, no issues. And taking a look at what our final product, so far this has come together very nicely. And of course we always test fit things along the way. So I'm going to go ahead and insert all eight of our bolts. And make sure they're nice and snug and tight. Just takes a minute because it takes a while to turn all these down. And it looks pretty good. So far everything lines up. So while that speaker's in the ring, let's go ahead and see how it looks within the box. Now this is the passenger side. It's got a little bit more room to work. But you can see it's got plenty of room to sit within the box. So so far this is looking really promising. And this is looking really good, so let's keep moving forward. So I'm going to go ahead and grab our sander and some 80 grit sandpaper. And we'll go ahead and sand down the base just so we can have some wood exposed. And we're also going to sand the outer edges of the fiberglass just so we can attach the fleece later on. So this is doing a little preemptive strike. So the ring is going to fit in just like this. It's going to go ahead and attach to the base. But all I want to do is I want to flatten down the ring a little bit at the bottom here, just so I have a little bit more of a flat surface to mate with the base. So all we're going to do is use our same sander and just go ahead and flatten it out. So now when we put the ring in the box, it has more of a mating surface when we glue it down, as well as it's less likely to roll on me. Now as far as where to mount the ring, I'm going to use the driver's side to determine where I'm going to put it. So wherever it can line up on the driver's side is where we're going to line it up on the passenger side as well. And now that we've determined a good spot in mine, all we're going to do is attach the ring using a little bit of wood glue. Nice little generous amount, obviously. 
And we'll go ahead and get that in place. And see if I can get it nice and clean. There we go. And then I'll take a C clamp and we'll go ahead and press that in place as well. And we'll make sure it's nice and tight. That way it's not going anywhere. And there we go. Good and tight. So now we can show you what we got. Now the ring is sticking out a little bit. I have it sticking out just where the outer ring is off the base. So let me see if I can lift this up and show you to the side. So the main one, the main support ring, the inner ring, is actually touching all of the base. It's actually flush with it. The outer ring is the only thing that's sitting off to the side. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a measuring tape and measure from the edge of the speaker box to the center of the ring. And it's about 9 inches. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to mount the ring in the exact same spot on the passenger side as well. This will help with my OCD. And of course the same steps as earlier. Go ahead and apply some wood glue. And go ahead and put our C-clamp down. And we're going to make sure it's nice and tight. And then we'll pick up our box and show you what we got. It's the same as the driver's side. The inner ring is flush and the outer ring is sitting right off the edge. So now we can take a moment to see what it looks like when it just backs up a little bit. So these are our two boxes. They look really good. This is starting to look really promising. And this is where the rings are going to sit. Now again, this looks kind of weird, but don't worry. This is going to come together, especially after we add the fleece. But I'm going to go ahead and let these sit over tonight just so the glue can dry. The next day. So now that we let this sit overnight, we can go and remove our C-clamps. And yeah, it looks pretty good, nice and sturdy. And we'll go ahead and move to the other side as well, take the C-clamp off. And so far, yep, that looks pretty sturdy as well. Oh man, that feels really good. And yep, that's it, pretty much what we expected. It didn't move, so that's a good sign. So I think we can go ahead and keep moving forward on this one. So I want to go ahead and reinforce the ring. I got these wooden dowels right here. I'm going to pull one out. And this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to go right through the very center of the ring into the base. And we're going to use a 1364 bit and just a drill right in. So I'm going to start from the bottom under the base to the very, very center of the ring. And let's see if I can get dead on on this one. Or at least try to. And we'll go ahead and drill through. This may take a second. All right. Looks pretty good. Nothing cracked. And then looking at the ring, look at that. Dead center. That's exactly what I wanted right there. So that's actually looking really good. And since I only need about half, let me go ahead and break this apart. Very nice. And now I'll go ahead and grab some wood glue. Of course, I always like to apply a nice little generous amount. And we'll go ahead and insert this pin right in the ring. And this might require a little excess force starting to get stiffened up. So I'll take a hammer and give it a few love taps until it goes all the way through. Yeah, very nice. Looks good right there. Yep. So far, no cracks, no issues. And now we'll grab a saw and go ahead and clean off the edges. Now I know this is not a wood cutting blade, but this is all I have available and this is pretty much an easy job. And these came out looking nice and flush. And then I'll go ahead and grab some 100 grit sandpaper and go ahead and smooth these edges out till they're nice and clean. So now that we know the bottom of the ring is secure, let's take a look at the top. Now that does have a little bit of play, a little bit of wobble. We're gonna need to address that before installing the fleece. So let's grab a half inch dowel and we're gonna go have to cut it and attach it to the top. So I'm going to go ahead and get it to where I want it in place. And then we'll take our pencil and go ahead and mark out where we want to cut it. Now it's going to be at an angle because it needs to be flush with the ring. So I'm going to try to do my best to do that. And there we go. And see how that sits. And look at that. It sits right in place. That's beautiful. Now we'll grab our hot glue gun and apply a little bit to the ring and the dowel. And then we'll go do the same thing on the other side as well. You don't need much. A dab will do you. But can't hurt to get a little extra in there. And let's do a quick wobble. Oh yeah, that looks really good. That's what we want. So after we did the passenger side, let me go ahead and bring the camera in because I always want to show you the progress as we move forward. And taking a look at this, there's nothing much to it. Just a little bit of hot glue and it's holding it in place and it's very easy to do. And we did the same thing on the driver's side as well and that came out just as sturdy. Now this next step is optional. I did grab some 80 grit sandpaper in our sander and I want to go ahead and round off the edges of the speaker rings. I just want to make it nice and smooth so when we apply the fleece later, it's not going against a sharp edge. And it looks like they rounded off very nicely. Not too shabby. So now that we're done sanding for today, let me go and grab some alcohol and a microfiber cloth. And let's go ahead and prep our surface. We want to clean off all the fiberglass and wooden surface, remove all the sawdust and fiberglass dust. That way the fleece can adhere to the surface properly. And the fleece we'll be using is a fleece blanket. Seems actually very reasonably priced and I like the gray. And all we have to do is take the fleece and just go ahead and stretch it right over the box. I pretty much cut the blanket in half, one for each box. And we're going to stretch it over the front until it's good and tight. And I'm going to try to do as best I can. So we'll start by stapling the bottom. You don't necessarily need to use a stapler. If you want, you can just use the hot glue gun because we're going to use that for the rest of the box. 
So I'm going to use a pair of scissors and go ahead and cut around the edges. And we're going to have about six inches of extra fabric hanging over the edge because we're going to need that little extra when we go ahead and apply resin. And as you go ahead and glue the fleece down, go ahead and stretch it. And it looks like we're done with the passenger side. The fleece looks pretty good, nice and stretched over. So far, I like how nice and smooth that looks. That looks pretty promising. And we did the exact same thing on the driver's side as well, nice and smooth. And of course, you always want to take a step back and take a look at your progress as you're doing a project. So far, these boxes are looking really good. The really cool part is the way this fleece is stretched. It's kind of how it's going to look when you have carpet on there. So this is going to be really cool when it's all said and done. All right, now we need to go ahead and harden up our fleece, and we're going to go ahead and grab 10 ounces of resin and about 100 drops of hardener. Remember from our previous video, for every ounce of resin, you need about 10 drops of hardener. And we're going to go ahead and mix it up nice and thorough. Now all we're going to do is add resin using our brush here. And all you have to do is dab it in. We just want to saturate the fleece. And the whole idea is this will allow the fleece to adhere to the surrounding fiberglass and wood, as well as the fleece will act as another layer of support once the resin dries. And we're going to apply resin about an inch past the edge, as well as we're going to avoid trying to get resin in the very center of the ring. So I think we're at a good stopping point for this video. Now we went ahead and finished saturating the fleece for both boxes. It required 10 ounces each and it came out looking really good. We went ahead and added a generous amount to the edges just to make sure they adhere properly to the fiberglass. And since these are looking pretty promising, we should be done with the boxes by the end of the next video.